Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and if you're an Unreal Engine developer, well rejoice, because Unreal Engine 5.1 is available now. It was shipped in preview a number of months back, and to be honest, I had so many bugs with that 5.1 preview, I barely touched it. So let's hopefully, they kind of ironed out those kinks with the 5.1 release. And there is a ton in this release, so let's just jump straight in. Now what you're going to notice is right away, all three of the marquee features from Unreal Engine 5 got updates here, that being Lumen, Nanite, and World Partition. Now, Lumen is a real-time global illumination system. Basically, it handles the dynamic lighting in your scenes. Nanite is uh, for dealing with super, super, super high-density polygon meshes, and it just takes care of the details for you. So you, you, in theory, don't need to worry about your polygon budgets. Unreal Engine will just deal with the, the LODs and the streaming and all that stuff for you. And then finally, World Partitioning is a way of just um, splitting your game map in the editor up into manageable chunks. All three of those areas got improvements. Additionally, uh, we got virtual shadow maps uh, were added in as well. So we're going to jump through and take a look at what happened. Now, this is the uh, TLDR version. There is full release notes. I'm not going to go into full depth with the release notes, but let's scan through the top level summary stuff first. So first off, we've got Nanite. Now, the big thing people are going to be excited about Nanite uh, is that they're going to make me say the word foliage. Yes. So uh, it's been updated with programmable rasterizers for material driven animations and deformation via world position offset as well as opacity maps this paves the way for artists to use nanite to program specific object behaviors for example nanite based foliage with leaves blowing in the wind so you can see right here so up till now nanite has been pretty static in what it's capable of uh, so this is a cool uh, addition to it it's going to open up a lot of doors for what you could do with nanite environments so you can see here again these leaves blowing in the wind uh, we also got some improvements just basically to working with the engine itself it's not mentioned here uh, oh no i guess it is right here shader compilation on demand this thing right here oh i've been waiting for that so you know when you uh you load up a, an example from the the marketplace or whatever and you're sitting there compiling seven thousand shaders even though you don't need them yet well that ladies and gentlemen can be a thing of the past with on demand shader compilation you compile shaders when you need them i love that feature i uh, that yes i'm very happy about that but on top of that we've got some other things here uh we've got pipeline state objects caching for dx12 by the way dx12 is now also the default set on Windows platforms. We also have virtual assets, which basically decouples the metadata or like the, the, the update information or kind of the summary or table of contents information of its asset from the asset itself. So this should result in faster syncs when working with uh, something like Perforce for um, asset management or source control management. Uh, so those improvements should definitely help. Uh, feature will initially support textures and audio assets, the intention to add more types in the future. So basically, if you're working with version control, it should be just a bit nicer experience. Now, I told you about world partitioning got some updates. Well, the big one here is large world coordinates. Now, what this means is that you can now make, and I get this wrong every time, I believe the answer is solar system scale, not galaxy scale, but now you can make very, very large world environments. You couple that in with the world partitioning tools and you can make almost any game you can imagine. If you want to make something like Elite Dangerous uh, and define everything manually yourself, well, large world coordinates will allow you to do this. This gives you 64-bit uh, instead of 32-bit coordinates, so uh, you can make very, very, very large levels uh, by hand. So that's the, one of the nice things with the large world coordinates being added in. Uh, we've also got some other improvements for source control with world partitioning. So thanks to the, the improved user experience around managing, filtering, searching, and viewing files and change lists, made it easier to find content in the world within your change list and vice versa. There's also a new HLOD or hierarchical level of detail support for water rendering and streaming, meaning you can make larger bodies of water with better performance and a smaller memory footprint. Uh, on top of that, uh, virtual production stuff, uh, most of my channel isn't really interested in that, so I'm mostly going to gloss over. But if you're using this, if you're using Unreal Engine for real time film production, uh, they've got some updates there, obviously, as well. Things like color correction windows, uh, the ability to play back uncompressed EXRs, and so on. Uh, then we go into the animation side of things. I got to admit, this one, I don't fully understand what they're trying to illustrate with this image, other than you know, there's mild updating going on here. Uh, but basically what it allows you to do is create a defor deformer that you train using a Maya plugin. Uh, and then Unreal Engine is able to use that dynamic deformer inside of Unreal Engine. Again, I'm not fully understanding exactly how this one would work. Uh, if you're an animator, perhaps you can explain it better and you can also explain uh, what exactly this image is trying to illustrate that wouldn't know about 
otherwise. But for handling those dynamic uh, deformations, like you can see with the, his muscle musculature over there, uh, you can now train it in Maya using a plugin, and it works here. Now, one thing to note, by the way, this is beta. When it comes to Unreal Engine releases, especially for plugins and such, things have three tiers, experimental, beta, and production ready. If something is experimental, it doesn't guarantee it's going to make it into the engine, whereas beta is going to be there. It's mostly ready to use, but it's just not ready to be used in production. So one of those things to definitely be aware of. Uh, the procedural rigging or the control rig have improved as well. Um, we've also got extensions for the uh, sequencer, which are now exposed via Blueprint in Python. That's the non-linear non animation editor aspect of it. The audio system's got improvements. Metasounds is their new audio system that was built in 4. I don't know. It was one of the 4.x later releases added Metasounds. This is replacing things like uh, w Weiss uh, for audio or FMOD. This is their internal audio system. Got some new node types, um, multi-channel output formats, new ability to show feedback on real-time node connections. Also, we've got the Soundscape plugin uh, for procedural ambient sound generation. Now, this actually came about from that Matrix demonstration they did. So if you've got people walking around, birds chirping, uh, horns blaring, etc., cetera, uh, Soundscape handles that. Uh, I believe it is at the beta level now, but don't quote me on that one. And speaking of that example, so remember this Matrix example they did? Well, parts of it are now being propagated into Unreal Engine itself around the artificial intelligence tools. So again, I mentioned that th some things are experimental, some things are beta, etc. Well, smart objects and state tree are now considered production ready, so you can use them in your own game, whereas mass entity has now been updated from experimental to beta. So this means mass entity will eventually make it into the engine itself. It's just not considered production ready yet. And mass entity is a gameplay focused framework for data oriented calculations enable you to uh, efficiently populate large-scale worlds and create crowds with tens of thousands of believable AI agents. Again, you know when you saw all of the people running around in the world environment there, you could crank this way up if you had the computer to handle it. Well, Mass Entity was the one handling that. The two that are now ready to go are Smart Object and State Tree. Uh, state tree being a general purpose hierarchical state machine combines selectors and behavior trees. Uh, and then smart objects placed objects in a level that AI agents and players can interact with. So, you know, goals and things to do, things for them to. It's basically a way of um, interacting with your agents, to, you know, giving them tasks and such to do. So, that is the top level summary. Now, one thing you will notice if you are a Mac developer. Uh, no mention of Mac OS Silicon. That was one of the big things about the Unreal Engine 5.1 initial release is that it was going to run natively on Apple Silicon. And then when we downloaded it, it just didn't. It was still an Intel binary. Well, we'll get to that in just a minute. So here we are in the full release notes. Now, I'm not going to go through all this because, uh, well, because of this. <laughs> so if you get an idea of uh, how big Unreal Engine 5.1 releases are, that 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 is the release notes that I'm still not all the way through. But, uh, woo. Okay. All right, there, I accidentally zoomed it up to 4,000 times. Uh, so here we are, going back to the beginning. Uh, we will focus on some of the cool things here, especially the, the cool new graphic stuff. Again, we covered all of these things in the summary, uh, but we got a couple of examples. So you can see some of the lumen improvements. They really want me to say foliage in this one, don't they? Uh, now supports two-sided foliage shading model. So you can see the immediate effects of that in action. Uh, software ray tracing also has new, much more accurate representation for foliage uh, through stochastic semi-transparent distance Distance field ray traces, which fixes over occlusion on foliage. Okay, uh, so some lumen improvements. As you can see the the results of it right there. Um, just generally kind of software improvements across the board. The other one is single layer water with reflections. So you should get nice, fast to render water support out of this guy. Uh, Nanite. Uh, this is going to kind of showcase. So you're going to see things move so now you've got the ability to have rustling of leaves and other foliage really this release is my bane uh but nanite got some very nice improvements to see full details of how nanite improved here um the path tracer was improved so on and so forth this is another neat new one there's now a translucent overlay material so you can do special effects which traditionally you would have needed to duplicate the mesh and then change the thing of the secondary mesh and so on uh, so this is going to open up for a number of different special effects. Cool new feature there. My number one favorite, of course, is the on-demand shader compilation. Uh, that is just going to make opening up 
projects in the first place just so much more pleasant and that's one of the biggest knocks i've had on using unreal engine in the capacity that i use it again a lot of directx 12 improvements here as well also do know that directx 12 is the default uh for uh windows rendering now uh strata materials this is an experimental feature and so it's this one is i don't know if i should even cover it yet because it's so early on uh but it's a new way of doing materials that they're going to be going forward so it's a new material system for unreal engine this will eventually be gigantic but right now it is quite experimental. Maybe I'll do its own video where I play around with strata materials, uh, but they're there in experimental format and a ton of other stuff here. So as I mentioned earlier on, DirectX 12 Shader Model 6 is another default for PCs with new projects. Uh, material editor inline editing. This is light mixer for, again, if you're doing film production stuff, uh, all the improvements across the board for world building. It goes on and on and on. There is just an absolute ton in this release, as you can see from the more detailed release notes. Now, uh, what I was talking about earlier on, well, let's jump to that one. So if you are a Mac user, this is good news slash bad news. So basically, if you want to run uh, Unreal Engine 5.1 on Apple Silicon, from now, you're going to have to build it yourself. So this is a bit unfortunate. Uh, it's experimental at this point in time, so no, no guarantee it's going to actually work out either. So native support for Unreal Engine Silicon, M1 devices and later should see improved performance when running the editor. Also, you get better battery life and everything else. Rosetta has like a 10 to 15% performance hit involved in it, and that applies to both speed, thermals, everything. So um, getting it native Silicon will definitely be very nice. Unfortunately, it's not available to build through the Epic Games launcher. Instead, you need to build from source on your Apple Silicon-based Mac with Xcode. Building Unreal um, Engine with Xcode on Apple Silicon will default to building the experimental native version with the target device uh, listed as My Mac. To build the Rosetta version, you'll need to change it to My Mac Rosetta. So if you want to check out Unreal Engine on Apple Silicon, you got to build it yourself. Now, if you want to know how well this works, uh, do let me know in the comments down below. Potentially, I could build it and, and do a run of uh, Unreal Engine uh, 5.1 Rosetta versus M1 if there's enough interest. Uh, I, I need to see that in the comments down below because every time that I open up Xcode, a small part of my soul dies. So uh, do let me know if you want me to kill part of my soul, and I will go ahead and do that. And then we got a ton of other improvements across the board. Not, not even in any particular level of um you know importance or anything this is just the full-on release notes and there is an absolute ton of changes in here so if you are interested i will link both these in the linked article down below so they're both available for download right now in the epic games launcher that is unreal engine 5.1 a lot there to talk about let me know what you think comments down below and i will talk to you all later goodbye